Because Christians have no empirical evidence of God, nor repeatable tests that we can run on God, nor any valid and sound argument for God, they'll sometimes resort to asking questions of the atheists. One popular question to ask is, if you had enough evidence that God was real, this specific Judeo-Christian God, would you follow Jesus? Would you accept his sacrifice for your sins, etc.? Well, there's no evidence, so I can't answer the question. At least, not honestly. I, I don't. There's nothing to answer because I don't have the evidence. I, I have no way to make that choice. But they want you to go on the hypothetical anyways, and I'll give you a possible reason why in a moment. So, you think about it and you go, well, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't follow the God, I wouldn't worship it, I wouldn't uh, ask for forgiveness, I wouldn't follow Jesus, I wouldn't do what it wanted me to do. Here's the problem with this God, is it offers a bribe and then also threatens simultaneously. Now, neither of these are logically valid. and. Logic is very important to me, and I don't think that a real God would be so crude as to not have a better idea than to offer people bribes and then threaten them. And that's all this particular God seems to be capable of doing is, here's the bribe, you'll get all this wonderful cool stuff for all time. And here's the threat. If you don't, then you get this terrible, horrible stuff for all time. Well, I'm not going to... I'm not going to follow that system. I'm not going to do what you want. And if I can, I'll fight you. But I probably can't since you're more powerful than me. And whatever you do to me, well, oh well. My ethics is better than yours. First of all, considering the whole notion of sin, well, from the moment of birth, we're stuck with sin no matter what we do because of original sin. Unless you don't really believe that that actually activates until a certain magical age, which many Christians don't. I mean, this is why Catholics have their babies baptized, is that kind of like cleanses them of their sin uh, for a while until they reach the age of accountability which varies from different even among Catholic churches so what age is that I, I don't know it's the age of accountability and does it say what that is in the Bible not really but maybe it's 13 maybe it's 12 when yeah, there's questions about it and so before that age if they die then they're fine they go straight to heaven but after that age of accountability, which is not really mentioned in the Bible, so nobody really knows what it is, then, then all bets are off and they're screwed. Oh, yeah. So let's just say that it was 13 and they turn 13. So is it that day? Like if they're in an airplane and they're constantly ahead of the, the time zone that would make them 13, does that mean God has to wait for them to land? Like, if they die mid-flight and they're still technically not yet 13, does that count? I don't know. But at any rate, if they die after the age of accountability and they haven't accepted God's gift, there's not enough quotes in the universe to put around that word, because it's not a gift, of salvation, then they're screwed, and they're screwed forever. Now, if we actually had evidence of God, akin to how much evidence we have for, say, the sun, because, I mean, yeah, there, there's plenty of evidence for that. Nobody needs to question that the sun exists, although perhaps a small group of people do. Who knows? Okay, if we had that much evidence and so we could talk to this thing and we could ask it questions, I would reject the idea that sins are acquired from birth. 
that's just as sickening. And the whole age of accountability thing is also sickening. But maybe we would have those straightened out. Okay. Let's just say that that's off the table. You're not born with original sin. But you'll acquire sins throughout your life. But again, maybe they don't count until you are aware of these sins against God. And so if you don't do any of them, you're fine. But you'll do some of them at some point. That's the whole point of the 614 commandments is to prove to you that you can't please God by doing his commands. Even though that's kind of the point that you're supposed to do those things, but then the Judeo-Christian faith is like, well, you don't have to do those things because then you're forgiven, but you're not forgiven because Jesus said that all those things were still in place, but then he also said, nah, never mind, it's a new rule that I've come up with. Just love people like you love yourself and you'll be fine. So I'm not sure which it is, but maybe again, if this God was there to talk to, we could actually find out how it's supposed to work. But let's just say that it's, you know, following just a very simple uh, rule. And if you break that rule at all, you must immediately ask to be forgiven. Why? Why? Because that's the way it wants you to do things. Why? 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 Look, if I made a mistake, then I made a mistake. And the idea that just one mistake, and then if I die after that one mistake, that that's enough to punish me for all time because I didn't ask for forgiveness. That's not right. That's not just. That's evil. That's sick. That's twisted. So my ethics are better than that. My morals are better than that. No matter how I try to frame the idea of the so-called forgiveness of sins ploy, which is nothing more than carrot and the stick, it seems to me to be wrong to put the wrongs that I've done onto somebody else. Well, you broke a law, see, and this person's going to give, you know, get you out of jail for free and and it will be like you never broke the law. No, I think I if I broke the law, then I need I need to pay for that somehow. Well, that's what the punishment is. The punishment is is this horrible, terrible place for all time. Why? Why? That's not that's, you know, that, that doesn't compute. If you steal, which is one of the Ten Commandments, which may or may not matter, I don't know, but let's just say it did. Okay, so you st steal. It doesn't matter why you stole, by the way. <laughs> but let's just say you did. And that was the only thing that you've done that's wrong. Well, I guess now here comes another question. If you accept Jesus into your life and you like ask for forgiveness, do you have to continually ask for forgiveness for the sin that you did just one time? Or is it for every sin that you do? Like if you're driving somewhere and you accidentally say God's name in vain and your car flips over and you wind up dead, are you screwed or not? Don't know. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> Is salvation granting you freedom from having to worry about any sin that you do? Or do you still have to ask forgiveness for these sins that you do? Uh, it depends who you ask. <laughs> it's, 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 like, it's almost like somebody made up this stuff and nobody can agree upon it because it's not clearly laid out or something. But again, if God was around, we could ask God and maybe we would get a clarification. But let's just say that it was one sin, and you died, and that's it. That's, uh, that's enough to punish you forever. No. I, I, I won't be part, I mean, I, I have no choice but to be part of it, but I wouldn't be part of that. I wouldn't say, okay, well, I guess I'd want you to take my sins so that I don't have that terrible, horrible thing to me, because 
I'm allowing the ad ballium appeal to threat, appeal to the stick, to sway me. Or I'm saying, wow, that's I get all this cool stuff if I say yes. Well, yeah. Then I'm a, then I'm sort of coming to the bribe. And neither one of those is logical, and neither one of those is ethical in my system of ethics. So no, I wouldn't accept Jesus if there was proof. But there's no proof. So why is it that the theist, the apologist for Christianity, will sometimes ask this question of us atheists and skeptics? Well, one reason is perhaps this. They know, or they suspect, that they don't have anything to offer us. So in order to shrug off their accountability for proving that any of this is true, which they can't do, they'll ask us this question, suspecting that we'll say no to it. And then say, ah, see, you wouldn't accept Jesus even if there was proof. So there's no reason to give you that proof. My work here is done. I made my point. What was your point? Oh, my point was, see, even if God was actually evident, you still wouldn't accept God into your heart or uh, allow Jesus to forgive your sins, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, and? So my point is that it doesn't matter if there's proof or not. You're still not going to follow God. Well, yeah, I guess, but... There's a problem here. You're not off the hook of providing that proof, one. Secondly, God's not off the hook for providing that proof. And third, how am I supposed to make a decent decision without any evidence at all? I don't know what this God is like. Now you're assuming that it's your God. But then the question can go back on you. Well, what if some other God happened to be true and you had to do whatever they wanted you to do in order to be saved or in order to do whatever the bleep it was? Would you do that? Maybe you would. Maybe your ethics are sucky and you're fine with that. Mine aren't. So if you want to ask me this question in order to avoid the burden of proof or in your own mind, here's the answer. And if that proves to you that even if proof of God was available that it wouldn't really matter, okay, wonderful, but you still don't have proof of God so it doesn't really matter anyways. But you'll as the theist, as the apologist, you won't get that, you won't accept that, you won't understand that, you won't want to because you need to believe in your God. You want to believe in your God and you can't think of a moment that wouldn't be in that belief set. It's really hard to imagine yourself not believing in God. Besides, if you stop believing, well, you're screwed. Although the moment you stop believing is when you realize you're not screwed anyways. Because there's no reason to believe in such an illogical deity.